The biggest gas giant in our solar system seems to be getting a lot of attention again. New satellite footage has revealed that there's something strange going on on Jupiter's surface that might just change everything. Join us as we go through this terrifying new discovery on the planet and find out exactly what's wrong with the Great Red Spot. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, Jupiter's Great Red Spot is a long-lasting and powerful storm in the planet's southern hemisphere that seems to be getting smaller and may soon reach its smallest size ever recorded. Scientists have been studying this massive storm for over 150 years now, so it's a little alarming to see that it's no longer the same size as it was years ago. The Great Red Spot, also known as the GRS, is like the apple of every Jupiter observer's eye. It's a high-pressure storm caught between two jet streams that has been spinning for over 358 years. According to data from NASA's Galileo probe, this storm is fueled by rising warm air from thunderstorms on the planet. However, recent observations from the Juno spacecraft in 2021 suggest that the storm's energy source may come from below the cloud base, with its roots reaching 300 miles deep under Jupiter's surface. Just like a hurricane on Earth, the center of the red spot is relatively calm, but as you move farther out, winds can reach incredible speeds between 430 and 680 kilometers per hour. Now, if you've seen Sesame Street as a kid and you remember the cookie monster from it, then similar to that, think of the red spot as a storm-eating giant. It consumes smaller storms, boosting its rotational energy and temporarily making it smaller. Unlike Earth's hurricanes that weaken over land, Jupiter's atmosphere provides a smooth medium. Despite these factors, it looks like the red spot has been shrinking for decades. But you know what doesn't shrink? Our stainless universe ring, the perfect gift for your space-obsessed friend. Check out the link in the description box for more. Since 2012, it's been narrowing in diameter at a faster rate while expanding in latitude, becoming more circular for a time. According to planetary scientist Amy Simon from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, the GRS now measures 9,165 miles in longitude and 6,525 miles in latitude. Observers like Damian Peach have also been capturing images of the spot's diminishing size using the Winjupos program, saying that the small size, pale pink color, and turbulent environment make the spot less prominent than before. On November 6, 2023, Damian Peach measured the GRS and found it to be around 12,500 kilometers, or about 7,770 miles across. If confirmed, this would make the GRS not only smaller than Earth, but also the smallest size ever recorded. This is shocking, because in the late 1800s, the spot was enormous, reaching 25,500 miles, which is enough to swallow three Earths. So when you compare the recent dimensions to that, now it's much smaller. The GRS's visibility is influenced by more than just its size. The local environment matters too. There's turbulence in the clouds near the GRS, and the red spot hollow, sometimes called the RSH, is a dark and well-defined area surrounding the spot that affects its appearance. Not only that, but a section of the South Temperate Belt near the RSH's border can also sometimes make the spot seem less obvious. In a 2018 paper by Amy Simon and her team, they found that the GRS is shrinking at a rate of 0.194 degrees per year in width and 0.048 degrees in latitude. The reason for this continued shrinkage is unclear, but the western drift in longitude has been speeding up, affecting its location and energy source. The unusual activity on Jupiter isn't exactly new either. Before the red spot's alarming shrinkage shook the scientific community, NASA's Juno mission made some surprising discoveries of its own. It revealed that the massive storm cloud that extends about 300 miles deep is actually much deeper than we previously thought. The Great Red Spot is a gigantic storm on Jupiter, known for its counterclockwise spinning clouds, and to this day, its distinctive crimson to dark orange color remains a mystery. Some scientists believe that the cosmic rays might be influencing the composition of its atmosphere, but others don't really think that's the case. The data from Juno uncovered details about the cyclones on Jupiter, indicating they are warmer at the top with a lower atmospheric density, while the colder region below has a higher density. The GRS, which is considered one of the longest-lived planetary storms, also behaves a little differently. It is warmer at the bottom and colder at the top. When you compare the storm's activity to ones on Earth, you'd actually be surprised to know that this giant swirling spot on Jupiter is, in fact, called an anticyclone. 
It's like a high-pressure zone that spins really slowly, taking six whole days to make one full circle. Unlike Earth's anti-cyclones, which bring sunshine and pleasant weather, Jupiter's storm is way bigger and different. It's like a massive, swirling bubble stuck in the planet's atmosphere. Despite our understanding of Earth's anti-cyclones, scientists are still unsure about how and when the Great Red Spot formed. No one knows exactly why it's lasted so long, but some astronomers think that it's stuck between fast-moving air currents or gets energy from the heat inside. And because Jupiter doesn't have any land to slow it down, it just keeps on spinning. Now, obviously, it's a little overwhelming to find out that the biggest planet in our solar system has a huge hurricane on it that can potentially swallow Earth. But it's also strange that it's shrinking in size. So why do researchers think the Great Red Spot has been shrinking and also becoming taller? Well, if we go back to Science 101, then rotating storms, such as cyclones and anticyclones, on Jupiter typically form from a much bigger weather system that condenses down into a distinct storm. Jupiter's alternating pattern of constant high-speed eastward and westward winds acts to channel storms and confine them to a latitude band. In the case of the GRS, it almost rolls inside that wind channel. However, the GRS is actually bigger than the channel, meaning it also deflects those winds, and there is continuous external pressure on it. Over time, the GRS has continued to shrink in both latitude and longitude, and sometimes grows in altitude as it continuously adjusts to balance the internal momentum and the outside winds. But what we don't know is at exactly what size and shape a storm may stabilize, and for how long. This is why the reason behind the Great Red Spot's shrinkage is still a mystery. It could be that the weather patterns supporting it have weakened after possibly hundreds of years, and as we've already talked about before, aside from getting smaller, the spot is also changing in shape, color, and other features. The future of the spot is uncertain, and while some research suggests it might vanish within a couple of decades, it could also endure for centuries. The iconic red color of the spot remains a puzzle, with some scientists speculating it could be due to chemicals like ammonia. The spot's color has been shifting to a ruddy orange since 2014, and the reasons for this change are not yet fully understood. Scientists are not certain about the exact cause of the great red spot's color, which can range from very pale to intense red-orange. By analyzing images taken at different light wavelengths, Researchers suggest that colored particles in the upper hazes near the top of the storm interact with sunlight. These particles include hydrocarbons and complex molecules that, when exposed to UV radiation, turn orange. The color may also depend on whether fresh white clouds are drawn into the storm, but the answer to that depends on future funding and missions for the gas giant. What's interesting, though, is that there's a smaller version of the Great Red Spot called the Little Red Spot, or Red Spot Jr., which formed between 1998 and 2000 from three white, oval-shaped storms. In a 2016 study, researchers discovered that the gases above the GRS are hotter than anywhere else on Jupiter, and they believe this heating is caused by acoustic waves created by the storm's extreme turbulence. Not only that, but throughout history, the GRS has been on everyone's radar. Early observations in the 1660s also mention a spot, but it was much smaller and possibly at a different latitude. The data spanning over 150 years shows that the red spot was significantly larger in the 1870s, spanning over 45,000 kilometers in longitude. This long-term data helps researchers understand how interactions with the winds may have changed over time. Computer simulations of storm size, shape, and motions are now being used to study these changes so we can learn more about the planet's dynamics. But at the same time, scientists are also hopeful that it'll tell them more about Earth's weather, too. You see, we already know that the Great Red Spot is an anticyclone, a high-pressure system, which is less common on Earth compared to cyclones. Studying both Earth's storms and the GRS allows scientists to gain insights into fluid dynamics. Detailed knowledge of Earth's stable storms helps understand how their behavior and structure apply to Jupiter. By studying the stability of the anticyclone as it changes over time, scientists can provide a comparison with Earth's different conditions, such as land masses and variable high-level winds, influencing storm dissipation. Needless to say, Jupiter and other giant planets serve as a fluid dynamics laboratory to help us understand the factors influencing storm formation, intensity, and lifetime. But the question is, how much time do we have to study the spot until it disappears? 
Let us know in the comments and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this.